Hallelujah. Welcome to a beautiful, wonderful, glorious day that God has given to us so that we can appreciate Him, love Him, and respond to Him. Welcome to Prayer Banquet. Let's just recognize our dad as we just thank him for today. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness <clears throat> showered over us. We thank you for your grace that has never departed from us. Your ability is made perfect in our weaknesses. Your glory is revealed in us and to man. We thank you for the glory of God, the weight, the, all your weight that you have revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. And you have given us access through his finished work that each and every one of us can enjoy the bounties of your love, the fullness of your grace, and the wonders of your, your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for seeing eyes now. We thank you for hearing ears. We thank you for understanding heart. We thank you for <clears throat> quickening up at us from deep within us so that we can appreciate all you have made us to become and all you have done for us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and welcome. Praise God. We've been learning about the love of God and we've been looking into the face of God to see how much He loves us. You know, sometimes you need to just gaze at this and let it sit over in your mind. You know, just sit to down and ask yourself, does God love me? And what is His love for me? What does it mean to me? Does God really love me? You know, when people can say, oh, God loves you, and all, but what does it mean to you? If someone walks up to you and say, I love you, what does it mean to you? We live in a world and in a society where love has been used in different phrases and different places. Over the last few weeks, we've been learning about the different expressions of love in the Greek culture that is popular now. We talked about eros, the erotic kind of love that is only when you are beautiful in the eyes of the beholder, that is when they tame out call you love they, they tend to appreciate you so if you are not beautiful in the eyes of the beholder the, then you can't be appreciated or, or respected or responded to appropriately but it is the, the the secret behind intimacy in couples and also the secret behind the what we have architecture and all the arts you know someone who walks out and brings out the beauty of something so it is not that it is not the the the, the 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 object has to be beautiful for the subject to appreciate it. But that's uh, what is happening. And so when people say I love you, they mean necessarily just they mean that they are loving you because of something that they see in you that they appreciate that they call beautiful. You know. And no one looks at and someone who has been a murderer and say I love you. No one looks at a, a killer and say, I love you. No one looks at a thief and say, I love you. No one looks at someone who has broken the law or someone who is evil and say, I love you. Why? Because in their eyes, you are not worthy of love. And so we looked at also another expression of the Greek culture when it comes to love. And we looked at what they define as filios or the brotherly kind of love, a kindred kind of love. It means we stand together in the same purpose, we stand together in the same values. Somebody can say I love my nation. Right? And somebody can say I love my 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 breakfast. I love my, my 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 football. I love my soccer team. You're standing together at with the same kindred. That means you stand together with the same values. It means that if you they don't perform up to expectations, they don't meet what you designed as uh, what you what you have set as a standard. Then you, that love is shaken. It is standing on, 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 on feeble ground, it's standing on shaky ground. So most times people don't stick along with those kind of things. You see people change clubs, you see people change nations, you see people change political affiliations, you see people change things because after a while their values change and then they don't meet the standards of each parties. And so this is also an unshakable kind of expression. So when we hear that, I love you, people think, oh, you only love me because we are together in the same boat? Do you love me because we are together in the same values? Do you love me together because we are together in the same pursuit? Do you love me because we are together, working together in the same agenda? Is your love uh, commensurate or tied to the agenda we live together to pursue? But Jesus brought another kind of love, which is what I want to say. That's why I'm asking you the question. Uh, that's why I'm asking you to ask yourself, does God love me? 
So Jesus brought another vocabulary and Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read Romans chapter 5 again. I think we've touched it, but I feel the Lord wants me to re-emphasize it. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Many years ago, the Lord brought me to the scripture and was using to teach me about marriage. And it, sh it, it humbled me a little bit because it, it, it taught me something that I've never heard before. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. I'm reading from the Passion translation of the scripture, and I'm going to read the King James translation too. It says, <clears throat> No, verse Romans 5, verse 5. It says, For since we are permanently grafted into him to experience a death like his, then we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection life like his and a new life that it imparts. Could it be any clearer? Oh, sorry, I'm reading Romans chapter 6. Let me go to chapter 5. Beg your pardon, Romans chapter 5, from verse 5, and I read, praise the Lord. It says here, and this hope is not disappointing, that means a hope, an expectation. It's not something that you, you'd be disappointed. So when someone says, I love you, and then you, you don't have to be disappointed. If that's what it's, it's trying to refer to here. It says, this hope is not disappointing. It's not a disappointing fantasy, because we can now experience the endless love of God cascade into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in our lives. We can experience God's endless love. It's not a doctrine. It's not a sermon. It's an experience. And it's not a disappointing one. It means it is reliable. It can be counted upon every day, every minute, every moment. Whether you feel good or you don't feel good. Let me read the King James translation. Hope does not make a shame. Because the love of God is shed, is poured forth abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. It means God is revealing His love to us by the person of the Holy Spirit. God is making that love real to us. God is making that endless love for us. And God was showing me this and said, let me read, let me continue to read. This is where I'm going to. Verse 6, for when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who are entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. The King James says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Let me read verse 8. Verse 8 now says, But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. King James says, God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is what the Lord told me about love. He said, love, my love is dictated to everyone who has offended. My love is dictated to everyone who is not perfect, which includes every human being. <laughs> my love is dictated to everyone who doesn't make it, who doesn't even walk with my values. You know, you only people only love people who work together together and agree together. Nah, I'm not saying that you should work with people who, don't, who agree with you. You know, you can love people uh, in that way. But God is showing us His love that His love was dictated to us while we were, not after we changed our lives, not because we changed, not because we did things right. While we were yet sinners, God loved us, and it is in this love that you can experience your healing. It is through this love you can experience deliverance. Many times we want to get our acts right so that God will help us. We want to do things right so that God will help us. No, we don't do things right so that God will help us. We do things right because God has already helped us. It is, it is because He has helped us we now begin to behave right. It is the love of God that causes us to repent. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that makes a man change his behavior, change his thinking, change his, his actions. You know, if love is poured out to you while you are yet unqualified, how much more now that you have become a part of his family? You see, if God can extend his love, you know, if somebody is very wealthy and you're not a part of his family and he reaches out on the outside to where you are, maybe you're poor, maybe you're struggling, maybe you and extends his hand of help to you and then brings you into his family, make you a part member of his family. How much more, now that you are a member of his family, will you enjoy his goodness? He didn't qualify when he reached out to you and helped you. 
now that you are in his family, do you think you will no longer be qualified? You see, many times we come into the kingdom and we try to earn God's goodness and God's favor. No, just sit down and ask yourself, does God love me? And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, while you are yet a sinner, while you are yet a lion, while you are yet doing the things you did, while you are yet in rebellion against God, while you are yet living independent of God, while you are yet in your own ways, in your own arrogance, in your own pride, God loved you. So just sit down and say, you love me enough to spare my life. You love me enough to prove by giving me Jesus. You see, when God gave you Jesus, that was the proof of his love. You see, if, if I can give you all I have, why you are not qualified for it? Do you think I can withhold anything else for you? When God gave us Jesus, it was everything heaven had. It was heaven's treasure. Romans chapter 8 tells us it was heaven's treasure in verse 32. Poured out to you. Not just poured out for all of us. It was poured out to you, particularly you, that you think you are not qualified. You, that you think you don't deserve it. You, that you don't think you don't, you don't merit it. It was the love of God poured out for you. I want you to receive his love today as we just thank him for his love. And one of the things that love does is that if he can love you and give you Jesus, he can love you and deliver you from anything. His love for you is a love that we told nothing. So you can reach out and say, Father, thank you for loving me. Help me. Father, thank you for loving me. I receive your help. I receive your deliverance. I receive your healing. I receive your goodness. I receive favor. Why? Love is God's goodness dictated, directed to you. That you are a sinner. Now, when I say you are a sinner, I'm trying to refer to you to the time before you met Christ. Because many times we fail to realize that we didn't deserve anything when God gave us everything. We didn't deserve anything. God gave you everything. Do you not think God is going to withhold anything from you? Father, I thank you. I never deserved any of your goodness. But because you love, you are love in fullness. Your full heaven is described, your throne is described as a throne of love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for loving me, hallelujah, and for pouring out your son, Christ on the cross, to take all my flaws, all my mistakes, all my shame, all my guilt, so you nailed my sin on the cross. And if you can declare me forgiven, how much more you can declare me healed. If you can declare me forgiven, you can declare me blessed. If you can declare me forgiven, you can declare me sound mind. You can declare me forgiven, you can declare me delivered, delivered from oppression. If you can declare me forgiven, you can declare me favored. Oh, thank you. Because I am forgiven, I am blessed. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich have no soul is mine today. I don't need to earn it. I am just a walking blessing everywhere I turn. Oh, because I am declared forgiven. Now I am favored, not just in heaven, on earth. Because if the heavens favor me, the earth cannot be rebellious to me. Whatever I set my hands to do, we prosper. Because you have chosen to favor me. Well, because you have declared I am forgiven, now I am healed. No oppression of the enemy can take over. No sickness, no disease. Because you have loved me preciously. You have loved me, just like a father will not allow his child to be bound by sickness. They weep. They go through all kinds of pain. You don't want to see that for me. If you can declare me forgiven, you can declare me healed. So by your stripes, I've been set free today. Right now, I accept this as my reality. I walk here free from every sickness. I walk here free from every pain. I walk here free from every oppression. I walk here free from every disease. I walk here free from every diagnosis that has been declared upon me. Now in the name of Jesus, I am healed, free, and whole in Jesus' name. Because you have declared me forgiven, you can declare me delivered. So I am delivered. Oh, every mental depressive thing I'm delivered from. I'm set free from that fear. I'm set free from that doubt. I'm set free from that, that oppression in my mind and in my body in the name of Jesus. Thank you for loving me this way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Spend time to let it sink over your heart. Let it sink over your mind and ask yourself, how much does God love me? If He can love you enough to give you Jesus, nothing is kept away from you. It is yours. Receive His love. Receive His grace. In Jesus' name. This is Prayer Banquet. And I'll see you tomorrow. We have a saying here, and I want you to never forget it. You are blessed, and no man 
can reverse it. Amen.